Hello friends! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this easy knitting machine sweatshirt. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we need for today's materials. For this project, you will need a knitting machine, some waste yarn, that's yarn that will be taken off of the project, and right now I have two of these latte cakes pulled out. I've already used one to do up one panel. Um, I do actually have about three or four of these, but I don't think I will need all those. I will for sure need two, possibly three, depending on the size. Now today we are going to be making four different panels um, for the body of this and then two panels for the arms. So just kind of trust and follow the process. Go with me as we go along and this panel, let me actually grab a tape measure. This panel is roughly 27 inches long so it is quite long. It's going to be a nice little um, sweater extra room in there. So let's get started. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your machine is on plain knitting or the flat knitting and not circular knitting. You also want to make sure that your main tooth is right here to, uh, what side is this? Your right side. So you won't be able to go past this point. This will be our first tooth that we're going to be using. So grab your scrap yarn. Now that we are all set up, we are going to do um, the normal way of starting on our machine. So we're going to start with our first white tooth. Oops, sorry guys. And then we'll just go back and forth when we are adding this. So each tooth we go around, move the camera back a little bit back and forth back and forth i do have a video if you check the link above on kind of how to use your machine how to just make a tube but we are gonna do this back and forth in front of one and behind another all the way all the way till we get back to this first white tooth at this point, this is very, very important when working flat panels, is you want to, you really want to make sure that your yarn is going up under this little part right here behind the tooth. Um, that is the hardest part of doing panel work, is getting this first stitch to catch. At this point, we want to start cranking back towards us so we start going in the opposite direction and see i just dropped my yarn off of here so i'm going to start this process all over again and i'll meet you right back here if that happens to you don't fret it does happen and what i mean is this stitch didn't catch and it's only right here is where it's going to start but i want to use this last needle so i'm going to go through and do this again really making sure that your yarn hooks under here and I'll show you when I come back to it. Now, once you have that, you just want to kind of go slow for the first round. I'm not going to lie, guys. That was a little bit of a process for me getting that going. Um, but the trick is just slow, 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 and make sure you're catching at the end. Now, once you get to this point and you're back to your black needle, you really only need to go over it once. And I like to just make sure that I'm holding tension right here as I start to crank back the other way because we want to make sure that our yarn is catching <clears throat> Excuse me, on the white ends. So the white tips, this is technically our first stitch, not any of the black ones. But we are just going to crank out and back to the other side. Okay. 
And then you just want to do a few rows of waist yarn. You want to do probably like eight or nine rows of waist yarn. So go ahead and crank this out. Once you have your rows done, you want to stop when your teeth, the black teeth, are to the right side again because that's going to be the beginning of our row. So go ahead, cut that off, and grab the yarn that you're actually going to be using. Now, for me, I like to do about three or four real nice big pulls to put in the middle just to make sure that I have plenty of yarn to close up for later. And I just don't want to be short on any yarn. So I definitely just make sure that I throw a nice little bit into the center of the machine. Now that that is in our yarn guide, we just kind of fold that back. And again, we want to make sure that this yarn is going to catch in our white stitch. So that's where we really want it to catch. Not so much on any of the black ones. And then you will just slowly start cranking over your waist yarn. At this point, you do, if you have a row counter, you want to make sure that your row is at zero. I did this once and then I just had to restart over my whole project because I didn't want to have to count how many rows I had. Okay, so here we are. Here's that black tooth. We can just make sure that it goes over this little ledge is the biggest thing because again we want it to catch onto our white needle and now for me I did 130 rows um, you can do as many rows as you want this is going to be for the length of your sweatshirt um, but I am going to crank out 130 and yeah i'm just going to time lapse this i guess for you guys so you can do that as you work on your project or whatever you choose to do now we have our panel done it's quite long i just kind of let it flow out through the bottom but we have done our 130 rows. We're back over to the black. So now what we want to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, kind of pull up quite a bit of yarn to put in the middle for sewing or attaching or whatever we might be needing this for. I probably go a bit excessive with this part, but I'm okay with that. Now we are going to open up our yarn Thing and put that in there and then grab our scrap yarn because now we want to crank out again quite a few rows of scrap yarn so this doesn't need to be quite as much just throw that into the yarn guide and then you want to start cranking now remember you want to make sure that it really really catches on this first stitch because it would be a bummer to get through all of this and then not have your scrap yarn catch. Now you do want to go slow through this, you know, first round and the second round, I guess, just to really make sure that you are getting caught on all of your stitches. Now go ahead and crank out a few rows. I like to do up to 10 rows. It's all personal preference on how much you like to do at this point, but me personally, I just crank back and forth a total of 10 rows. Now that I have my 10 rows cranked out, you want to go ahead and leave yourself some scrap yarn. This part's not really important because all of this that you just added is going to be coming off of your work. It's just to hold your stitches. So these are live stitches, so you just want to be really, really careful. Now what we're going to do is we are going to crank this off of the machine. So we'll go once this way, and then we'll bring it back and it should all fall off really nicely. It looks like I had a stitch that decided to stay on there. So. Alright, so go ahead. Now here's the panel that we just completed together. So remember these bottom panels are going to come off, um, but what we're going to do is you want to go ahead and crank out a total of four of these with 130 rows. 
the full length back and forth of the machine. This is going to be a little bit more of an oversized, a little bit larger, medium to large uh, sweatshirt, and it's going to be quite long. So go ahead, make four of those if you're following along with me, and then meet me back here. We'll make the sleeves, and then we will attach everything together. If you're still here, give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking of today's video so far and what yarn you think you might use when you make this cardigan. Now that I have all four panels done for the front and the back, we are going to go ahead and make the sleeve. Now you can use the whole machine. I'm gonna do this in a flat panel as well. Um, you wanna start by making sure the black needle is to the right side of your work, um, like before. And for me, I actually just went ahead, I have a few marks on here, but I marked off like 35 or 36 stitches because I want this to be a little bit of a smaller panel. So I'm going to do my cast on for this and I'll show you guys how I do that. Actually, I guess it'll just be like before. So um, we'll go ahead and cast on with scrap yarn again. Now here, I am at my marked off stitch, as you see right here. And now we are slowly going to crank back the way we came, trying to make sure that step, that stitch catches. And now you simply want to work a few rows of waist yarn for your sleeve. And then I think I'll probably go ahead and I'm going to do about 10 rows of waist yarn and then I will leave a long end like before for the sleeve and then I think I'll probably do about 100 rows for the sleeve. But again, this all depends on how long you want it. Um, I have done sleeves where it's um, the same length as my top where it's about, you know, 120 stitches where it's much longer. I have long arms, but this is for my friend who has much smaller arms than I do. So, or shorter, I should say. So I'm going to go ahead and crank out 10 rows of waist yarn, 100 rows of the main color. Do that twice and meet me back here. Once you have your pieces done, you need to close up the um, active stitches here and take off the waist yarn. So I'm gonna show you really fast how to do that on one of these panels. And then you'll wanna do it on both sides of all of your panels. At this point, go ahead and grab a crochet hook. I just have an eye millimeter hook. I like to use Furl's crochet hooks. Um, and then what you like to do is you need to find the first stitch right here and you'll see the color change and the difference. So you simply go into that stitch right there and you're going to yarn over just like this and pull through that loop, okay? So this is why you left yourself such a large, <laughs> long tail. So now remember, we're going to be doing this on all of our sides. So you can see the color difference right here between this and, the, and your waist yarn. So you are simply um, going to make single crochets, not slip stitches, all the way across. So you'll go in, draw the loop, pull it through, yarn over, and pull through two. Now you want to do that all the way down your panels on all the sides. So go ahead and do that for, how many panels do we have? We have six panels. So go ahead and do that through all of your panels and then meet me back here and we will sew everything together. Now I do have one more trick for you. Once you get this sewn and you have to take off the scrap yarn there's always one side that's a little bit harder to get apart and with that instead of trying to take it off from the top or cutting it or anything i just like to pull really um on the corner right here where you see it comes through and then you can actually just kind of pull this apart and then 
separate it and pull, separate and pull, and it just makes it so much easier. I used to just cut these and then have this big mess I would have to try to take apart. It was always such a pain, but this is my little trick that I found um, on how to get these to come apart the easiest. So that's just my little trick. At this point, you should have four different panels, the same length, 130 rows for the front and the back. So you have four of those. And then you will have two of your sleeves, um, which again are a little bit shorter and less in rows. <clears throat> because I do have a little bit of a variegated yarn here, I wanted to go ahead and make sure that I matched up. These are gonna be my two front panels. These will be my two back panels. So you wanna pick the two that you want to be in the front, and then you wanna flip the yarn so that the back side of the work, which looks like this, it's got a little bit more of those ruffles instead of the smooth side. You wanna make sure that that is facing you on both sides here. Now, what we wanna do is we want to simply single crochet or you can stitch if you want to stitch but you want to attach these two pieces um just right in the middle here now i like to <clears throat> i think i'm just going to uh, slip stitch all the way up um your whatever your preferred method is go ahead and do that along this panel and the back panel do it along both so you're going to do one like this and then put it aside you will grab your other two panels and put them like this and then do the same so do that to where you have this one done and then the other one done and then come back to the video so i guess i'm just going to show you guys a quick close-up but i'm not going to do the whole thing on camera so i'm just going to go through grab a needle. I gave myself a ton, a ton, a ton of um, yarn to work with to sew this together. And I go through, I'm going to leave a little bit here, and then I'm actually going to just tie a knot really fast. And now I'm just going to go back and forth through my work all the way until I get to the top. Like I was saying, you just kind of want to sew this together. This is a little bit kind of harder to show on film, especially when you have so much that you're working with. So just go back and forth, back and forth, or you can, like, however you prefer to do it. If it's easier for you to just go through and do a slip stitch or a single crochet, you can do that as well. Honestly, I think it's quicker, but for the front and back panel, I'm just going to do it like this. And then I'm going to slip stitch the sleeves together and everything else but just for this part of the panel work i want to have it as smooth as i can in the front right here which is why i'm going to be sewing it this way so again do that together um with your front and your back panels and meet me back here so this is what it should look like when both of your panels are done um, on the front side it's pretty invisible you can't really see too badly that they were combined now what we want to do is we want to move on to doing the neck portion before we sew on the sleeves now to do this you want to make sure that both of that your panels are facing the correct way. So you want to figure out what side you want to be the top. And then you want to put the first panel down with the right side facing you. And then you want to grab the other panel with the wrong side facing you and simply set that on top of your other work. So from here, you can sew in your ends if you would like before you go on with this. Um, otherwise, start at the corner right here, and you're simply going to sew along the edge, and then same with the other, leaving the space in between for a neck hole. This is what it looks like once you have your neck hole. Now you will line up the center of your sleeve. 
Now to be a little more specific with my stitch count, I counted into 17 stitches and on the 17th stitch I attached that right in the center and then I counted over 16 stitches and attached this corner from this point I counted over 16 stitches and attached there. I did that to both sides and then we are going to um, either sew, single crochet, um, however you choose to close this up. I think I'm going to do a single crochet because it has a little bit more give than sewing and I think I just want that right there in the sleeve part. So I'm going to do that and I will meet you back here. Now single crocheting across these did exactly what I wanted, it gave it a little bit more of a stretch. At this point, you want to fold all of your work in half, just like this. From here, it is up to you how you want to finish sewing. So we do have to seam in the ends here, also along the side. So remember though, when we flip it to sew it, we want to make sure that this wrong side is actually facing us. So the seams that we did from the front and the back panel, you want facing you. Um, I think that I'm just going to go ahead and probably single crochet possibly, I'm thinking, um, around the whole inside for the seam. Now, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to look on the other side, looking here. It seems to be okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a single crochet, starting from the tip of the sleeve all the way down. What I'll do is I'm actually going to place some stitch markers here in the corners. I'll place a stitch marker here, one in the middle, just to kind of keep everything closed and make sure that everything gets sewn properly and together and not too high or too low. So that's what I'm going to do. Do this on yours and then I'm going to show you guys what the finished product looks like. If you have enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you finished this project, if it was easy to follow, and send me a picture on Instagram of your finished product. So let's go ahead and we're going to finish this. And this is what it should look like when you are all finished. The ends are done here for the sleeves. You will want to go through and sew in your ends. But that's it, guys. That's how you make an oversized sweater on your Addy knitting machine. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and subscribe to my channel so you get notified when I release new tutorials and videos.